Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing an updated skincare routine for you guys, only this time it's going to be a combination skincare routine video, which I surprisingly don't really do that often. Usually it's either just the night routine or the morning routine, preferably it being the night routine. I tend to share that one more often as it's usually a lot more in depth. But today I'm going to be doing both. So you're going to see me in the morning and then you're going to see me again at night. So I just woke up. I haven't done anything for my skincare yet. The only thing I've done is brush my hair. So the first thing that I have been doing recently is using a micellar water to cleanse my skin. I've been doing my own DIY eyelash extensions ever since isolation and quarantine started as it really just helps me feel a little bit more up about myself so with that I can't always go in and be too vigorous with them when it comes to products so I've been using uh, oil free micellar water this is the Garnier Skin Active for sensitive skin and I take a generous amount of that on a cotton pad and I just go in and apply it to my target areas where I tend to get more oily throughout the day which is my t-zone If you're new here or you don't already know or you haven't really watched my skincare videos, I have a dry dehydrated combination sensitive skin. I used to have really acne prone skin a few years ago, but it hasn't been that case for about three years, I want to say. I feel like the last time I actively had um, acne breakouts was probably like when I was living in Japan. So I think, yeah, that was like almost four or three years ago. It's been a while. So with that being said, that means my skin is always quite dry and dehydrated, but even though it's like that, I still get really oily in my T-zones. It's kind of troublesome. So because I have those eyelash extensions on, I can't put the micellar directly on them. So I'm just like folding the cotton pad around my finger and just getting into those fine areas like my inner corner and my outer corner and then my lid where I get sleepies in my eyes. Because it is pretty much summertime now in Toronto, Canada, the weather's a lot hotter, there's a lot more humidity in the air. We usually sit around a 72 to a 50% humidity now, which is the ideal humidity for your skin. Anything lower than that, like in the 30% range or 20, which is how it usually is for the fall and winter season here in Canada, we usually sit up around like 19, 20, low 20s for humidity. Um, those conditions make your skin really dehydrated and really, really dry. But with a 40 to 50% humidity, your skin is thriving already on its own. So I don't really find that I need nearly as much skincare in the mornings as I did in the winter time. With that being said, I have been loving the Claire's Fundamental Ample Mist. Now, once again, because I have those eyelash extensions on, I can't directly spray this on my face because the oils within it will break down the bond of the glue on my eyelash extensions. If you guys are interested on how I do my own DIY eyelash extensions, you can find a link to it in the cards above in this video. So if you want to learn how to do it, you can find out there. So what I've been doing instead with this mist, which I really, really have been loving, it's super dewy and glowy without being too heavy on the skin and also it's really hydrating and nourishing. If you have oily skin, this product probably is going to be too heavy for you, but for me with dry dehydrated skin, that's somewhat combination, I find it's just perfect. So I spray about a few pumps of that into the palms of my hands and I just wipe it all over my skin, avoiding my eye area, but I still like to put it on my eyebrows and around the orbital bone. With any eye products, or products in general, you'd only have to apply them on that bone around your eyes because skincare can travel. You don't need to put it directly on your eyelid all the time, especially for things that contain oils, as you could potentially irritate your eyes. I actually 
share my skincare routine, like my morning skincare routine and my morning makeup routine pretty regularly on my Twitch channel. I stream every day Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Toronto Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Uh, usually just chatting, playing Animal Crossing, doing a little skincare, doing a little makeup in the morning to begin with. Um, so if you guys want to hang out with me live on stream, you can find me there every single morning. I have it linked in the description box down below. It's a lot of fun. Next, I go in with the Claire's Fundamental Watery Oily Drop. Again, this is a product that I find I more so am using now that it's a lot warmer. In the winter time, I found it wasn't quite enough, but for my skin in the summertime, this is just right. So taking quite a generous amount from the dropper on my hands and just all over my skin. I feel like this product is just the right amount of oil and hydration for the summertime for my dry dehydrated skin without being too heavy. In the winter time, it just kind of more so sat on top of my skin, but in the summertime, I feel like it's really just the right amount. Now I've noticed within the past like two weeks, I really haven't needed any heavy creams in the morning comparatively to the winter time. So instead I've just been going in with my Jeju 99% aloe vera gel and taking maybe like, I don't know, like a grape size amount into the palms of my hands. I use a lot of this. Aloe vera is one of my favorite skincare products as like a topper at the end of the routine or as my hydrating, like my intensive hydrating layer of choice. It is always in my morning and evening routine. And that bottle that I have, I, I think I got it like almost exactly a year ago and it still has a little bit left. So that's a good value. And I think it was only like 10 bucks, something like that. And then I always pull it down onto my chest. Now, before I finish off my morning skincare, what I usually do in the mornings now, <laughs> you guys may, if you watch my vlogging channel, you probably would have seen this, but sorry, it's a little bit chunky, but I love going in with my high frequency mach machine to tighten and tone my skin, especially on the mornings where I feel like my face is really swollen from sleeping. This I literally got on a wish for like, I don't know, 30, $30 or something like that. Is it as good as a professional high frequency machine? I have no idea, but I do know it is in fact a high frequency machine. Turning it on and setting it to full blast. What I like to do is focus on the areas where I have lymph nodes and where I feel I experience the most swelling. And for me, when I sleep at night, I sleep on the side of my face. So I feel like the majority of the swelling is usually in the whole center part of my face. So when I wake up in the morning, my lips are always very swollen. My nose is always swollen. And this whole area here is swollen. Sometimes my eyes are swollen, but I find the only thing I can do to help that is just putting in some calming and soothing eye drops. So I just go in and I do like a lifting motion. Because I have that skincare layer on already, it kind of makes it slide a little more easily. And I just do this for maybe like 10 minutes in the morning if I have time. Sometimes I do it on stream if I'm running behind, but usually I try to get it done before my live stream and before my makeup. Just 10 minutes of that, it's like five minutes per side of my face. I find that after I do this, my skin is a lot firmer, it's a lot tighter and lifted looking and less swollen and droopy. The lips as well to try to get that swelling out. And then the inner cheeks where the swelling, swelling from my nose is coming and I like to try to go in like an upward motion. And then sometimes when I go along the jawline, I try to pull it down so I get a little bit of lymphatic drainage. So I'm gonna go do this and then I'll tune back in. Okay, so it's been just under 10 minutes, but I feel like that's long enough for today. And I do get the feeling that my mic may have not properly recorded the first majority of the video. So I'm sorry if the audio was a mess, I'll try to clean it up as much as I can but it seems to be recording now. Anyway, the final steps of my summer skincare routine for the morning is going in with an SPF. Recently, I've been testing out the Coserx Shield Fit 
Snail Essence SPF 50 Plus PA++, which is an intensive SPF for people with dry and like aging skin. So far, I've been enjoying it. I do feel like it's a wonderful, wonderful cream or lotion alternative, which I really, really like. And it sits nicely under the makeup. So how I do this is I take one, two lines on my fingers. The recommended amount is actually three lines, but I feel that's always way too much for my face. I do tend to have a small face. Um, so I feel like a lot of portions that are proper for other people are a little too much for me. Um, so just adjust it to your liking. For me, this is about the right amount. So I just go ahead and focus that on the high points of my face first. It's like the forehead, the brow bone. You can also put this lightly over your eyelids if you want, but I can't because I have my eyelash extensions on. So just those main high points. So the entire or orbital bone where the sun hits the most, the nose, the upper lip, and just everywhere else. This is a really nice SPF. I'm not too sure at this point if it's one of my top favorites, but so far every single day that I've used it, it's been lovely. Like it has sit, it sit really nicely under my makeup and it doesn't leave a white cast on my skin, which I really, really like, and it doesn't make me overly oily. I do notice that I get more oily throughout the day when I wear this, but I feel like that's almost apparent with almost every SPF I use, except for the Biore Watery Essence UV Gel, which I think is still my all-time favorite because it's just perfect for every single day. This one's more rich, but with my dry skin, it's nice. It's a great alternative to using a day cream. So that is pretty much it. Then I would just move on with my um, makeup routine. I'm gonna get ready and enjoy the rest of my day and I'll tune back in in the evening to share with you guys how I remove my makeup and get ready for bed with my evening skincare routine. Welcome back. It is now, I think it's going on like seven o'clock, but I am done for today. I've had my makeup and my SPF on since like, I don't know, 9 a.m., something like that, and I am ready to move on. I want to have a nice shower and get comfy cozy in bed and maybe watch some TV anime, something along those lines. So I'm going to start my evening skincare routine for you guys, and I'm going to start it here in the bathroom because I'm going to do my whole makeup removing. I'll hop in the shower, do my facial cleansing, and then I'm going to hop on out and then continue with the skincare. When it comes to my facial cleansing, to be honest, nothing's really changed over the years. I think the only thing that really changes, like the steps are kind of all the same ever since I started doing Korean skincare, like not whether it be like 10 step Korean skincare or seven step or less. Ever since I started doing Korean skincare cleansing routine steps, my skin has improved drastically and I've just kind of stuck with it for the past like seven years or however long. But basically, I always do my evening skincare routine by starting off with an oil cleanser. The oil cleanser changes throughout the years. Before filming this video, I was actually using an Innis free one, the Green Tea Intensive Hydrating Seed Cleansing Oil. I don't know if that's the right name, but it's the Green Tea Seed Cleansing Oil. I went through the entire bottle of that and then I got my hands on this OG one recently, which is a jojoba based cleansing oil. I don't find it as emulsifying as my Innisfree one, which I found washed off a little more cleanly. This one, whenever I use it, I feel like I have to go in with a cloth after to wipe as well to make sure that I get everything off but it gets the job done. But anyway, whenever I use this on my skin, I literally feel the grits start to come out of my pores, which is a sign that it's working because that's what you want your cleansing oil to do. Pardon if you hear my cat meowing in the background whenever I'm in the bathroom, he starts like yelling at the door because he needs to come in and be 100% involved with what I'm doing in the bathroom. While cleansing, I'm going to take a one entire pump of the OG cleansing oil into the palms of my hands and massage it all over my face. Because I have those eyelash extensions on, I'm not going to apply this over my eye area because that would be putting oil directly on eyelash extensions, which is not a good idea if you want them to stay on. 
I do have a little bit of mascara on my lower lashes, so I'm just going to look up and lightly touch those hairs to get that mascara loosened up, but being ever so careful not to touch my eyelash extensions. Next, I'm going to be taking my Claire's Cleansing Puff. This is kind of like a fancy cognac sponge and it just helps to clear all the cleanser off of the skin and get really everything off those pores as well. So the step basically is just focusing on removing that cleansing oil, makeup, and SPF from my face. Now this is the stuff I'm going to do in the shower, which I can't bring you guys along with me for. But recently, I guess not recently, for the past like month to two months, I've been using the 23 years old black paint rhubarb cleansing stick. It's essentially a cleansing stick, the charcoal based cleansing stick in a stick form and you just rub it over your wet skin and then with your hands massage and then rinse it off. It's not that good at removing makeup. I've tried to remove mascara with it before and it doesn't really get the job done. So I always use that cleansing oil first to make sure all my makeup's broken down, loosened and removed as much as possible from my skin. Then I go in with my cleansing foam or any kind of foaming cleanser to really make sure my pores and all my makeup are gone and squeaky clean. And then I proceed to the rest of my skincare. So I'm gonna hop in the shower, do that, and check back in with you guys after. Okay, so I am all freshly showered. My skin is getting tight. I have a really dry, dehydrated, combination sensitive skin. So washing my face is always no good. Like even when I use just an oil cleanser on its own, I still get so tight and dehydrated after using that. Or even like milk cleansers, like I've used all those dry skin specific cleansers that aren't supposed to leave your skin feeling tight afterwards and they all do. So I usually rather quickly try to begin my skincare routine after cleansing my face. So I'm just going to go in with my Claire's Supple Preparation Facial Toner in the Unscented Formula. I have been using this toner for years. It is one of my top favorites. It's super hydrating, super, super gentle on the skin, not at all an astringent. And it's really just good to prep your skin for your skincare to come. Like even as soon as I get that going on my face, it feels so much better pretty instantly. On days that I'm extra dehydrated too, sometimes I go in with multiple layers of that, but for now, we're just gonna do one. Next is my treatment layers. I tend to switch it up quite a bit, but two of the products that I know I've been reaching for the most in the past couple months is the I'm From Ginseng Serum. As you can see, I'm getting quite low on this. And I feel like I only opened it up about three months ago. I love this. It's a really good anti-aging, affirming product, which is great for people who are more younger maturing skin as it's kind of like a preventative and I just take maybe half a dropper or sometimes a full dropper of that into the palms of my hands and just all over the place. It's a really lightweight, gentle, non-acidic, non-exfoliating treatment layer, strictly just nourishing, firming and anti-aging and I have never had a problem putting it around my eye area or on my eyes, especially because it has basically no oils in it. It's a very lightweight, treatment. It smells amazing too. One thing I like about the I'm From brand is it focuses on all natural ingredient driven products derived straight from like wholesome farms in Korea. It's a brand that I really love and I feel like it deserves a little more global love. Next I'm going to be going in with the Ordinary's Matrixel 10% Plus HA. This is a high intensity peptide serum. I only take, again, maybe like half a dropper or less of that. It's really, really rich. It's designed for fine lines and wrinkles. It's more so a preventative measure. If you feel like you already have a lot of deep set wrinkles on your skin, this probably is not going to give you the results you're looking for. But if you are concerned about skin aging, have started to notice fine lines and don't want to develop deep set wrinkles too early in life, this is a great product to start using as peptides encourage the 
glue between your skin cells. And as you age, what causes skin sagging, fine lines and wrinkles is your skin losing the glue between its skin cells. So peptides help to repair and restore that glue and also add more glue. That's like the easiest way to think about that ingredient. And I think, I think HA is just a different type of acid that works to deeply hydrate the skin. I'm not too sure on that though. Next, I've recently been going in with the Centella Blemish Cream. I have been having a lot of breakouts lately because the powder that I'm using to set my makeup has been break, like clogging my pores, especially in this area, but I don't wanna like buy a new product, especially in the climate, economic climate we're currently in. I don't think it's a good time for me to be spending money on makeup or anything like that when I don't really need it. Uh, so I've been using this as my treatment cream. It's not a cream that's going to nourish, hydrate, or really do anything in that regard for your skin. It's mostly just a active, or not active, like a natural ingredient from the centella plant that helps to seriously calm and soothe the skin and also help to have healing properties. So it's really good if you have active acne, acne scars, redness on the skin, a lot of overall sensitivity, redness even. It's just a really good all around healing plant, especially when it comes to acne and redness. So I just put that on the areas where I find I'm having my breakouts. It even has like a, I think it has a little bit of tea tree in it and maybe a little bit of mint. It has like a little bit of a cooling sensation. It does feel a little bit sticky on the skin. So I don't really recommend using a generous amount of this during the day. I did notice it also can leave a white cast on the skin and it's easy to apply too much. And then it just kind of sits on top and crumbles if you try to put anything else over top of it. You know when you have too much skincare on and then you do your makeup and it starts to get crumbly? <laughs> that can happen with this product easily. So the next step, there's cat hair all over everything. <sighs> you guys don't even understand, I vacuum like once a week, sometimes twice a week on occasions if I'm really like over it and there's still cat hair everywhere. But anyway, I'm going to be going in with one of my new favorite hydrating creams. This is the Innis Free Intensive Hydrating Cream with Green Tea Seed. It's somewhat nourishing, but deeply hydrating. So if you're like me and you have dry, dehydrated, sensitive skin, that's also on the combination side, this is a great cream to consider because it still gives you that moisturizing factor without being super heavy on the skin, but generally focuses on that hydration effect. So I absolutely love this. In the winter time, it was great as a day cream. And in the summer, I've been using it as my night cream because during the daytime now that it's warmer and hot outside, it's too heavy for me. So just all over my face. Avoiding the eye area though, because this can be quite a heavy cream and it can travel and can make the eyes a little bit irritated if it gets in there. But my skin already feels amazing. Like it just feels so good. So to finish it off, because it's summer, usually I would have a few more steps in between if it was the winter time to give more of a nourishing, anti-aging, uh, other treatments that I find my skin needs in the winter time. But since it's summer, I don't need that much, especially at nighttime. So I just go in with my aloe vera once again, and I use this as a sleeping mask. So this time I apply an even thicker layer to my skin. Think of it as like a sealing, hydrating layer. So if you have de dehydrated skin, using pure aloe vera as your sleeping mask is world changing. You just wake up and your skin is so moist and healthy. So literally apply it as if you're applying a face mask, but you're just gonna leave it on. And it just seals everything in. And then I like to pull whatever is left over down my neck and my chest. Sometimes when I'm applying my other skincare products like my night cream, I would also pull that down onto my neck if I have a little bit extra, but this time my skin really absorbed everything I had on my hand. So I didn't really have any excess to pull down, but just pulling that aloe vera down onto my neck and my chest is plenty. 
Alrighty, you guys, so that is it for my morning and evening skincare routine for the spring and summer season. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to anyone who also has dry, dehydrated, combination sensitive skin. And if you're acne prone, these products are actually also very good for people with acne prone skin. They're all catered to sensitivity, not clogging pores and making sure your skin is healthy and protected from acne causing bacteria. So if you do have acne, you can also consider these products. And if you have a skin type like me in general, these will probably be great for you. But do also remember everyone's skin is different. Everyone's skin reacts differently. So what works for me might also not work for you. So experiment, try things out, and who knows, maybe it will work for you. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and select the all option or else YouTube will not recommend my videos to you, unfortunately. YouTube's a little bit rude that way. So if you don't hit that notification bell and select the all option, you most likely will not see all of my uploads that I do here on my channel. So if you wanna make sure you're tuned in to all my weekly videos, make sure you hit that all button when you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I love you guys so much and I will see you next week. Bye.